So Runway ML's Gen 3 has arrived. This is obviously a successor to their wildly popular Gen 2 model. This is a really significant step forward and really does cement us in this new 2.0 era of AI video. Today, we're gonna dive into kind of an ultimate prompting guide for Gen 3. I have spent the last few days like really going on a deep dive of researching it, testing it, and studying it, and I'm gonna pass all of that along to you. Okay, lots to cover, let's get started. Briefly, I did just want to take a quick moment to showcase exactly how far we've come. Back on April 26th of 2023, uh, I posted a first look at Gen 2, which at the time was only text to video, and uh, strung some scenes together and made this. It's charming, warpy, and morphy, uh, but this morning I just decided to revamp it for a V2 with Gen 3, and we got this. So yeah, we have come a long way in a very short amount of time. Let's start looking at prompting in Gen 3, which is much more akin to the modern style of prompting. It allows you to be a lot more descriptive in your prompt and you know less focused on spamming keywords. So for example, giving Gen 3 the prompt, the man in black fled across the desert and the gunslinger followed. Dark Tower fans, that one's for you. We end up getting this shot, which is not bad. I mean, there are some morphing issues, like suddenly the man in black has an umbrella here. Uh, and you'll see in one second that the gunslinger followed prompt ends up giving us this. I mean, he's not the worst gunslinger ever, but he also does kind of look like he, you know, was an extra in a film noir movie and kind of wandered onto the wrong set. But with some additional details into the prompt and some prompt structuring, uh, we end up with a shot like this, which is obviously vastly improved. There are, uh, you know, a handful of problems here. We'll talk about that in one second. Uh, but the prompt here is long shot in the distance, a man in black robes calmly walks across a vast desert wasteland. The camera orbits to reveal a gunslinger watching him with steel resolve. To note, I did crib that orange and red color grading look uh, part of the prompt from Nicholas Newbert which in these early days I think is actually really important to do as we're all learning what this model is capable of. I'll shout out everyone and have links to profiles down below. I don't necessarily think that the keyword version of prompting is necessarily better than the more descriptive version of prompting, but I do think that there are certain buckets that you should probably hit if you're looking to maximize your generation. So while you can go about writing your prompt in whatever fashion you like, I do think that it's helpful to have have keywords that are associated with these sections built into your prompt. Obviously, first, your subject, your person, place, or thing, whatever you, we are focusing on in your shot. Second would be the action that that thing is taking. Uh, is it walking? Is it dancing? Is it staring intently? Uh, I do note that adjectives do work well here, so uh, angrily walking or dancing happily. Setting obviously refers to your location, a castle, a busy city street, or a dusty motel. That said, I do think that you can buy a little bit more if you attach kind of mood characteristics to it as well, such as, you know, dark stormy clouds or a bright sunny day. Shot obviously refers to things like wide angle, close up and long shot. I do have a list of shot terms that you can try out in Gen 3. You don't need to worry about like screenshotting this or anything. This is all available along with a number of prompts that we're looking at today in a PDF over on Gumroad. It is completely free. If you know you see the little cost thing, just put zero in there and you can download it. Although you are always welcome to leave a donation. It is always highly appreciated. Once again, just to reiterate, there is no right or wrong way to prompt. Uh, do feel free to swap the order around on these things. Put your shot first, your subject uh, in the middle. See what happens, just experiment and iterate. Rounding out with style, this kind of reinforces the overall look that you're going for, uh, things like cinematic film. I have noticed that calling out IMAX actually does seem to play a part. For example, taking this shot, which is a woman striding through a misty forest wearing a leather jacket, uh, we end up with a result that looks like this. However, by adding in a keyword of IMAX, uh, we end up with this as a result, uh, which 
definitely looks a lot better. Um, as a note, I did prompt monster in the background as well with this generation. We ended up with kind of like that weird dissolve. That's definitely something that I've noticed that Gen 3 does. It tries very hard to adhere to your prompt to the point where if it can't do something, it will often kind of put a cut or a dissolve in there in order to accomplish the mission. Uh, for example, in this shot where I prompted a woman's green eye in a macro shot, the camera pulls out to reveal the interior of an industrial spaceship, muted cold atmosphere in the style of a modern blockbuster. Um, it gives us this. So we get the macro shot of the eye, but as we pull out, we end up dissolving to our woman. She also morphs and uh, turns into like walking away from us, but you know, whatever. It's still AI video, you're still gonna end up with weird stuff. That said, uh, one trick if you do run across a generation that you like and you kind of wanna iterate on that, uh, like for example, here we have a cyberpunk woman holding a katana, strides confidently down a neon lit street in a futuristic city. What we can do is if we just end up re-rolling this prompt again, so rerunning our prompt, we end up with this, and she looks way scarier than our first generation. So if that is not the direction that you're aiming for, one of the things that you can do is come back over to your seed here and just copy that, hit reuse prompt, and come down to settings over here and just change the seed over to that original seed and then generate from there. Now you're not gonna end up with the same output and really what would be the point in that, but at least stylistically, it will maintain kind of the overall look. I ended up utilizing this method to create a music video for Radiohead's exit music for a film that's posted over on X. I can't post it here because of, well, copyright stuff. Um, but as you can see here, I managed to pretty much maintain the overall look of like, this idea of these people kind of uh, disconnected walking through, uh, you know, an apocalypse scene. Obviously a lot of layers here. We have an AI video for a song called Exit Music for a Film off of an album called OK Computer. Yeah, I can be clever sometimes. Exploring more with community ideas, Tom Blake notes that the word suddenly seems to do some pretty interesting stuff when you use that in your prompt. So I took that idea and tried out rain falling over a city. Suddenly we fast zoom down to the city street and enter the POV of someone running into a coffee shop. Uh, cinematic, moody, dark atmosphere. Uh, the result is, I think, pretty cool. Um, we definitely got most of what we asked for here, although our POV person obviously did not make it into the coffee shop in this shot and is still stuck outside of the rain. Also, those storm clouds are super intense. Gen 3 can also do text, and one of the coolest examples that I've seen of this, uh, Blaine Brown put together kind of in trying to mimic the MCU Marvel opening. Um, yeah, that is... That is super impressive. So the prompt here is a close-up of superhero comic book pages flipping with narrow depth of field on a wooden table. As the camera zooms out, the words uh, Blazane in 3D letters is revealed with several superhero comic panels on the word as textures. Uh, you can read the rest and it actually is all in the PDF as well. Now to note, I did try to run that same prompt, only swapping out uh, Blaine's name for mine, and I was getting errors. I don't know if like the keywords of Marvel MCU ended up triggering some kind of content system. I have been running into some weird issues with that by like name dropping things like James Bond and you know, Gen 3 being like, I ain't doing that. But I mean, there are always ways around that. For example, uh, I saw this generation put together by Heather Cooper, which I thought was just super, super cool. The prompt here is a miniature civilization living on the pages of an ancient scroll, building tiny castles, pyramids, and cities from letters and paragraphs. As the pages unroll, the buildings become colorful. And because today's Monday and I watched House of the Dragon last night, uh, I saw that and instantly thought about the old Game of Thrones intro, uh, deciding to try to recreate that using Heather's prompt as kind of a base prompt. So uh, I ended up changing it to a miniature civilization living on a medieval fantasy map, building tiny castles and cities from a map in a 3D rendered style. And yeah, I mean, it's not uh, Winterfell, but you know, kind of in the neighborhood. Admittedly, no matter how much I experimented with the prompting, I couldn't get like the buildings to sort of uh, build in a time lapse as it does in the actual title sequence, but that's okay. I mean, this is its own thing. 
And again, as much as I'm talking about like prompt formatting and keywords and all of that stuff, uh, you know, sometimes you can just type in something stupid and get something awesome as always generating did here uh, with a puppet talking to a man who does not want to be talking to a puppet. I mean, that is comedy gold. What it cannot do is take actual script pages and make video out of that. Uh, as we did in the Dream Factory video, I took a portion from the Dark Knight screenplay. This is the scene in the opening where, you know, the uh, two henchmen zip line across the building. Uh, running that, we end up with uh, with this. Um, I mean, this is pretty hilarious. Yeah, that's that's pretty amazing. Um, you know what this reminds me of is uh, if you ever saw Be Kind Rewind, um, you know, the film with Most Def and Jack Black where they're recreating famous movie scenes with like a VHS camcorder. Yeah, that is this. Aroha AI notes that it does a really good job with time lapses, particularly time lapses that are happening in two different intervals. Uh, the prompt here is a woman sits staring through a window outside the days turn rapidly into night at 100x. So again, not the longest, most complex prompt, but you know, it got the desired result. One thing that I do think would be very helpful is to make sure that you rate your outputs. Remember, this is Gen 3 Alpha. It is still very much in the alpha phase. And the model will only continue to improve. I mean, just think back to that first Gen 2 output. We've also got a lot of exciting steps to come, like image to video in Gen 3. Uh, there is some question about how something like a motion brush will work in Gen 3. I'm not entirely sure. I kind of suspect that it might look a little something like Boximator, which we looked at a while back. No inside information there. That is just me speculating. So overall, there is a lot of exploring to do with this new model, and I'm really looking forward to going like prompt splunking with you. So please do drop your findings and your favorite prompts in the comments down below. Thank you very much for watching. My name is Tim.